Hey guys, it's Rainy Nights. Before we get to the video, if you could please leave a like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful to you. Um, I just finished watching Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. 2022 Oscar winner, I believe, or at the very least nominee, um, Michelle Yao and J.B. Lee Curtis. Expectations were big. I had no idea what to expect. And... Um, Let's just say, this is probably going to be my single most controversial movie review I've ever done. Because um, I didn't like it at all. Not one bit. Um, I don't know exactly why this is so cherished and beloved by everyone. Because on my Letterboxd account, I have a few thousand followers on there and I follow another few thousand myself. And uh, anyone who mutually follows each other on Letterboxd is referred to as a friend. And this film basically is the most watched film of my entire friends list. And it also has more than 700,000 10 out of 10 rankings on Letterboxd. And basically every review I clicked through of my friends um, was a 10 out of 10. I could not find one differing opinion. Uh, so I guess I'm gonna be that odd guy out, which I don't like actually. I don't like, you. sometimes I like being contrarian, but this time I don't like it because I want to enjoy it. Um, and now I'm questioning, you know, my taste, I guess, because it's, uh, it's like that phenomenon where, you know, majority rules, right? So me being such an outlier kind of makes me feel uneasy. But I'm going to have to stay true to myself. This one, I just did not like anything about it at all. The only thing that was good was the performances, and that's it. I, uh, so... Yeah, I really, really don't recommend this one. And one more thing, disclaimer I want to say at the start here. I am on the spectrum in real life, and I've never had this issue before, but I personally believe that um, the fact that I'm autistic definitely hurt this film's enjoyment for me. Uh, because this film is just over-the-top, bizarre, uncomfortable, nauseating, um, it just, it does everything to hurt and damage a uh, autistic, autistic person's sensory. So if you're someone with sensory issues like me, you cannot handle this. And if you don't get what I mean by that, it's just the same thing as, uh, basically let's picture it as, let's say, get an epileptic person to watch a two hour movie with lots of epileptic moments. That's what this is, except instead of epilepsy, it's just um, on the spectrum sort of emotional stuff and, um, also sensory issues. So yeah, if I wasn't autistic, I probably would have liked this more. So I'll, I'll tell you that up front right now. But I'm just going to be real with it. So whether you agree or disagree with me, doesn't matter. It's not going to change my opinion or view at all. Um, I'm not going to claim to be objective, etc. So this is just me. I know I'm in the minority, I'm not trying to play contrarian. I'm just simply speaking my truth. So in this film, we follow let me try my best here because, again, that's another thing on this channel. I don't Google plots. If I was confused, then I'm confused. I'm going to tell it to you how it is. I'm not going to go get a synopsis or get some help or, like, look at an explained video or anything like that. I'm just going to tell you the way I saw it. So this is, in my own words, what this film is about. This is about a Chinese mother who, I mean, I personally thought her life was fine, but the film thinks it's terrible, so apparently she has the worst life ever. Um, and some things are bad, yes. First bad thing, which is, I hope I don't annoy anyone, but like, this is a, a Chinese cultural and societal thing. This is not my own opinion. I don't believe this at all. Um, like, I, yeah, I don't believe this in the slightest, but, uh, basically problem number one is that her daughter is a lesbian, and since she's a Chinese mother, uh, that this is just a bit, that's a bit awkward for her, and is non-conforming, basically, and it's just an issue. Uh, she, her father is on, basically on his deathbed, he won't be around much longer, and uh, she has to find out how to bring the lesbian talk thing with him as well, because he's not going to understand it because of his generation and all that. Um, but that was the least of their issues. The other big issue is, uh, the two bigger issues are, one, the father is about to divorce her, and two, she is going to be charged with fraud for, um, scamming the government out of a bunch of money for her business. So, and this is where things go crazy, obviously. So she gets this stupid-looking Bluetooth wireless headset, and she is uh, 
taught how to uh, travel across the multiverse to the various dimensions um, by her alternative husband who comes from a world called Alpha Universe. And um, the Alpha Universe people are kind of the protectors of the fabric of reality and they're trying to stop this, the big bad of this film, who is basically turns out to be her daughter, or like an alternate version of her daughter. So she goes on this big galactic journey of just wild ridiculousness, uh, trying to either stop the big bad, which is her own daughter, or stop the Alphaverse people from playing with the fabric of reality too much. And it just kind of gets crazy from there, so I'm not going to claim to know everything about it, but it's a multiverse film that is focused on family drama, and it is very nihilistic and depressing. So, let's start with the positives for me. So, actually, no, let me start with the objective positives that other people liked. I don't necessarily like this stuff, but I'm going to tell you why this movie would be considered good, and maybe why it would be considered an Oscar. Because when I was looking through all those 10 out of 10 reviews, I could not find one single reason. People just said, wow, this is amazing, wow, I need to watch this once a month, but they never said why they liked it. That's why I like my reviews to have a little more substance to them. I don't just watch a movie and say, oh, I liked it, or oh, I didn't like it. I need to have some actual reasoning behind my thoughts. So here's the reasoning. Actually, no, I'm going to provide you the reasoning for those people who aren't providing the reasoning. They probably think it's really creative, it's non-conformative, uh, it's probably progressive, and um, it uh, has, it, yeah, that's that. those are the reasons. So it's creative, progressive, and um, non-conformative, and expectation defined. Those are probably the reasons why um, most people like it. And it's also a very emotional film. I think that's another reason people would like it. But I don't really like any of those reasons. Those are, I just want to talk about, those are reasons why other people would like it. Um, and I'm about to explain why I don't like those anyway. But here are the things that I actually liked. It had decent martial arts fights. Um, it was emotional and it, I would like to say it was not emotionally manipulative. I felt like it did actually earn its emotional scenes when it did have them. Um, so yeah, overall emotion was good. I think the tone's stupid and off, but overall when there is a serious moment, especially towards the end of the film, the ending is overall very good. I think the ending of the film is good. So martial arts is good, ending's good, emotion's there. Um, yeah, that's about it for me personally. Uh, so why do I hate this one? So should we start with the autistic stuff or should we start with the, the objective stuff? Let's start with the autistic stuff, okay? Because, don't worry, we'll get to the objective stuff. So, the autistic stuff, the subjective stuff, the reason why I and probably most people on the spectrum will have a hard time with this movie is because it will make you physically and emotionally ill start to finish for 2 hours and 20 minutes straight. So, physically ill, it is just a visual diarrhea. It is nauseating, dizzy, uh, it goes a mile a minute. There is literally like a thousand cuts within a millisecond sometimes. And it's just kind of, the entire movie has a feeling of zero gravity to it. And I felt like I was going to throw up the entire time. So I did not enjoy looking at the film uh, because it was just distressing to me. It made me feel distraught and I was almost on the verge of crying a few times because of how, um, just all the flashing colors and lights and dizziness and nauseation of it all was really pushing me over the edge. Uh, so this was a really tough one to sit through and I had to take a break personally. At an hour and a half I had to turn it off and take an hour, hour's break and then I turned it back on and it surprisingly didn't help at all. I was still just as distraught as I was before. But I did want to finish it because I bought a 4K copy so that's kind of the main reason and also because I don't have any reviews on this channel of films that I haven't finished. I used to have two, but I ended up deleting them because I felt they were a little bit invalid. There were two films that I reviewed that I didn't finish, which were Chaos Walking, which is just terrible, that's the only reason, and um, The Perfection on Netflix because it's disgusting and really gross. Uh, so I did not finish those films, but I did have reviews on my channel. I've since deleted those, and I do want to have a review of this on my channel, so I did force myself to finish it, but I did not have a good time. Um, so yeah, the, the autistic stuff is really just, it's going to make you uncomfortable start to finish. It's going to emotionally distress you if you, this is not a movie that you could watch while on drugs or medication. This is not a movie that you can watch if you are suicidal or depressed. 
Um, and it doesn't, it just, I didn't expect that. This, this experience reminded me of Hereditary. But Hereditary was a horror movie by uh, Ari Aster, right? That's his name. Um, so I expected that. So I was still uncomfortable in that movie. And that's probably the closest example I could say to having a hard time because of autism in a movie because that's not a very often thing that happens in movies. This is a very unique case. But um, this one I felt was going to be, I don't know, a family-friendly kind of in space adventure, something like that. I was totally wrong. This is an R-rated, crude, absurd, over-the-top, nauseating mess. Um, and its objective is to make you as uncomfortable as possible, to make you question your own existence and why we even bother breathing air in the first place. It's just so nihilistic and depressing. So there's the autistic stuff. So if you want to disregard all that, I don't blame you. Fair enough. Let's talk about the objective stuff now. First of all, this movie is extremely derivative of The Matrix. This was... I was actually super bothered by this. It literally steals everything from The Matrix. People calling this creative and unique. Yeah, it is creative and unique, but it's also not simultaneously. This is the most uncreative creative movie I've ever seen. It is literally just the Chinese version of The Matrix. That's all it is. Um, and it, 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 that's what it is. It's, you can't tell me it's not. We have Jamie Lee Curtis as Agent Smith. We've got our, uh, Michelle Yao as Neo. She learns how to go into the matrix, matrix itself. She learns her martial arts because she's able to kind of program her brain to learn how to do it. Literally, this, this movie is Chinese version of the Matrix. That's what it is. So, objective problem number one, it is not that creative, actually. It is just a derivative... Um, yeah, it's a derivative, lesser version of a movie that I like a lot. Um, number two, it's, it's just too much. It's, I mean, it's literally in the title, right? Everything, everywhere, all at once. But I didn't know it would be this overboard. I expected a little bit quirky and awkward, maybe, but not this much. This is completely incomprehensible at times. And um, the visual diarrhea that will be happening on, happening on screen is not like actual diarrhea. Actually, you know what? Sometimes it is real diarrhea. It might as well be. Because of the crude humor, we literally have... Um, there's dildos. There is um, anal fisting. I, like, I'm serious. This, this happens in the film. There is a vaginal fingering scene. There is... Um, but then there's also, that's like, it's really, really weirdly crude and over the top. I think the movie is very unfunny. Um, it's got these tired jokes that are just crude and not for me. And um, so other than the sex stuff, it's not just weird in that area. It's just weird in everything it does. Like we go to this, we go to this alternate world where there's two inanimate rocks that are talking to each other, and they're, they're used, they're, they think that swearing is so funny, so the pet rocks will just be cussing at each other back and forth, and it's like, can we, pl can I please get to the credits already? I don't find this funny, I don't find it entertaining, it's just stupid and annoying. So, yeah, this movie is not a 10 out of 10. I, 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 I don't mind being, um, you know, my original plan with this review was to be humble, just because, like, I'm in the wrong here, right? I have the, uh, the, the one out of the ten opinions that people don't, will not like. But, no, I'm not going to be humble. I would say the 700,000 plus people on Letterboxd that gave this a 10 out of 10 are extremely wrong, or they've just never seen The Matrix. I mean, come on. This is literally The Matrix. How can that many people give it a 10 out of 10? You can't give a movie that's literally a copy-paste that high of a score. Um, so yeah, this movie is a complete mess, borderline, incomprehensible, extremely difficult to follow, and the message is ultimately that life is pointless and it's nihilism, so I really don't like that at all. I'm going to give it a generous 4 out of 10. Now that's generous by my standards because I don't like this movie in the slightest. I would never consider watching it again under any circumstance. I felt it was visual diarrhea, it made me emotionally distraught, and I, uh, I would prefer not to own it. And, um, but I'm giving it a 4 out of 10 because it is not the worst thing ever. Just because I hate it doesn't mean it's the worst thing ever. So, yeah. Everything, everywhere, at one, all at once. I mean, I don't even know if I can recommend it to you or not because, yes, you should watch it if you're into bizarre, outlandish, non-conforming wild rides that just take it too far. Um, but please don't watch it if you are 
sensitive like I am uh, to the topics like nihilism, suicide, uh, crude and overly suggestive humor and all the other crap that's in this. So 4 out of 10, really really hated this one and probably is now officially my most uh, non-conforming opinion on this channel, which I guess makes sense this is a very non-conforming movie anyway. And normally I like non-conforming movies, but not this one, did not like it.